Hey guys, Josh with Metal in Motion, and today we're going to show you how to do a lead down test. We're working on a 2009 Arians riding mower. This is just your typical riding mower from like Lowe's, Home Depot. It has a 20 horsepower Briggs & Stratton single cylinder Intec engine. Anybody that's worked on any of these Intec engine knows that they are prone for head gasket failures. If we look at the cylinder head, this section in between the combustion chamber and this pushrod gallery is thin and that always has a tendency to blow between this section. There's a gasket called a head gasket and it goes on in between there. Okay, so what's happening with this mower is the customer says that it uses oil, but it uses oil, he notices it's smoking I should say, uh, when he mows on a hillside. Okay, and to me that was the typical symptoms of a blown head gasket. However, he called up a small engine shop and they said, oh, you're just going to have to rebuild your engine. It's not worth it. So he called me up to get a second opinion and after describing the situation to me, I said, I think you've got a blown head gasket. At least let me diagnose it. Uh, it could save you a lot of money. So that's what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing a leak down test on this engine. This thing. Okay, a leak down tester uses air from your air compressor and rather than using the engine to, to build up its own pressure, we're going to fill the engine up with air from the air compressor and we're going to measure how much air is leaking out of all the nooks and crannies. So to do this, we have to first put the engine at top dead center on the compression stroke. I'm going to show you how to do that. But when we put the engine at top dead center on compression stroke, both of the valves should be closed. Both of these rocker arms are going to be, um, if you were to take the valve cover off, you would be able to jiggle these rocker arms just a little bit. There's only like uh, four thousandths of a gap, four to six thousandths of a gap between the rocker arm and the top of the valve. And so you'd be able to just hear it clicking a little bit. And that would let you know that they're, they're loose, they're not uh, being pressed. Okay, so when it's at top dead center, we have to lock the engine from spinning over because when we put air into the engine it's going to want to push the piston down it's going to want to rotate the engine and we want to prevent that so what I do is I take a pair of channel locks okay say my engine is at top dead center right now what I do is I go underneath where the pulley that comes off of the engine it's where your belts attached to there's a long stem between the top pulley, which runs your drive belt for your transmission, and the bottom pulley, which runs the drive belt for the deck. There's a smooth section in there, and I can clamp this vice grip onto that smooth section and rest this vice grip up against the frame, and that's going to prevent the engine from wanting to spin over. It might also be a good idea to go on the other side and actually put a second vice grip resting against the opposite direction, so that actually keeps the engine from going uh, either direction. So now that we've locked our engine down in top dead center, okay, the valve should be closed. Um, we want to fill it up with 100 psi of air. Okay, usually it's like a minimum of 70 psi. I like to use 100 just because it makes the math easier to figure out. Okay, the two things that we're going to be doing is we're going to fill it up with 100 psi and we're going to be looking at our gauges. So one of these gauges, this is the regulator. This is the gauge for the hose. I put the regulator at 100 PSI. This is where my air compressor comes in. 100 PSI, when I plug this up, this has a quick connect fitting here, and release it. When I plug this up and start blowing air into the engine, the 100 PSI that regs on this second gauge is going to drop. Whatever that number is, we subtract it from what we started at, which was 100. Okay, so say we set it at 100, we plug this up to the engine and this drops to 60. 60 minus 100 is 40, so we have a 40% leakage. Typically you don't want anything like horrible worst case more than 20%. I think a lot of people like to even keep it to 10%. So that's if you put this at 100 and this second gauge drops down to 90, 90 minus 100 is 10, so that's 10% leakage. Okay, that's the first thing that we want to do is we want to see how much leakage this engine actually has. All engines are going to have an, a certain amount of leakage, and there is an acceptable amount of leakage, i.e. 10% or less. If this is more than 10%, then we're going to go on to the second step, which is listening for the air. Where is it coming out at? 
Okay, we've got our air filter removed. We've got our oil stick uh, taken out, loose, and you can take it all the way out if you want. Um, we are also going to be listening through the muffler, and we're going to be listening uh, around where the head bolts to the engine, that head gasket area. We're going to see if we hear any air hissing out of there. Okay, so now that we've got all this off, we need to find top dead center. Now, I use my hose for my leak down test. This is my leak down tester. This is homemade. And I can show you guys in another video if you want how I made this. But uh, the hose that it comes with is just a straight through hose. This is actually a compression tester hose that I've removed the uh, little valve out of it. So it's just a straight hose. I'm gonna screw the hose into the engine. And the easiest way that I do this is I take a balloon uh, or a glove. This is just a shop glove, like a real thin one. And I'm gonna stick the hose up into one of the fingers of the glove, okay? And I wanna try to just seal that off real good, leave a little bit hanging off the end there, okay? When I rotate the engine over, the piston as it travels upward is going to create pressure, as the piston when it goes down is going to create vacuum, okay? But you're not really going to see the pressure of the vacuum if the valves are open, because it's going to be losing it out of the valves, okay? So when the valves close, then this balloon will blow up as the piston is traveling upward, it's going to build that pressure, and it's going to fill this balloon up, and that's what we're looking for. So once it fills the balloon up, we're going to stop, we're going to take the hose out, we're going to insert something like I have this is just a 3 8 uh, not a 3 8 a quarter inch extension you can do a wooden pencil that would be safe something that uh, you can slide in the spark plug hole you'll rest it against the top of the piston and then you're going to use the piston to push this up and then it's going to actually move it back down and you want to find the highest part where that piston goes up before it starts going back down again you'll see here in a sec all right so we've got our hose is put up into one of the fingers of this glove. All right, I'm going to hold this up here and I'm going to turn the engine over. Okay, there we go. So the glove has just blown up, so that tells us that the piston is coming up and it's building pressure. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and we're going to insert our quarter inch extension. We're going to rest it on the spark plug. As the, now we're going to turn the engine over and be sure this will have a tendency to kind of get snagged in the spark plug hole. So you just kind of got to like guide it and turn it, you know, the engine real slow so you don't jam anything up. And we're going to turn the engine over real slow and we're going to bring this extension all the way out as far as it'll go before it starts going back down. Okay, I went too far. I'm going to back it up a little bit. Okay, that's about the highest, highest point this thing is, is coming out. Um, and that tells me that the piston is at top dead center. Okay, now anybody that's seen what I did um, is going to kind of laugh at this because I've taken off my rocker arm, so these valves are not working at all. They're shut no matter where the piston is. If the piston is down or it's up, it doesn't matter because I've taken the rocker arms, which means the springs are holding these valves shut. So most of the time your rocker arms are going to be on this. And if you don't do what we did with the glove and the hose and put it at top dead center, there's a potential for that rocker arm to be opening up one of the valves and it's gonna give you a bad reading. Okay, so now that I'm at top dead center, what I'm gonna do is take the, the vice grip and clamp it on the pulley underneath. And I'm gonna to try to rest it right against the, the frame. So when I clamp it down, the frame is keeping it in position. I'm going to screw in my leak down tester hose. I'm going to hook my regulator and my leak down tester up to my air hose. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this to zero. I don't want any pressure when I go to start this uh, process. I want to kind of actually hook this thing up and I like to just turn the air up slowly just to make sure the engine isn't going to rotate over. All right, once I get up to 40 or 60 pounds, okay, and it's not, okay, it's wanting to roll. I can see the engine, okay, the engine's wanting to move. So I need to put another clamp on that pulley underneath. 
Okay. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, hear that already, but it is just a, a tremendous amount of air coming out of this uh, push rod gallery here on the side. Okay, so if I want to pop this out, now that I know that the engine's not going to move, I'm going to have to crank this up to 100 PSI. All right, if you see that, both of my gauges are reading 100 PSI. Now this gauge is going to stay at 100, but when I hook my hose up to this, this gauge here is going to drop down to whatever the leakage is. So I think in our case, it's going to drop down to around 20 or 30. So we're going to hook it up. And sure enough, we're at 20 PSI. So we have a 80% leakage, and you can drastically hear the air right there coming out. All right, I'm going to turn this down because I don't need it blasting that much air. I just need enough air that I can hear where it's leaking at. All right, so right there. If I stick my finger, I don't know if you can see, see this, this tube up inside here? There's a hole up here, there's a hole here. Okay, it's actually leaking right in behind this tube. This is actually your intake. Um, which one is that? That's going to be, yeah, correct. That's actually the intake, um, your carburetor bolts to here. Okay, so it's actually leaking right through here. When we're looking at it from the front. So I'm trying to reach my finger around the back of this and see if I can feel where it's leaking out at. Even if I can't feel it, I can change the sound of the air coming out of it. So this does indeed have a blown head gasket. Now if there was no air leaking out here, we would be listening again for air coming out of the carburetor, we would be listening for air coming out of the muffler, we would be listening for air coming out of the dipstick tube, okay? And that would let us know if it came out of the carburetor, that means our intake valve is leaking. If it came out of the exhaust, that means our exhaust valve is leaking. If it comes out of the dipstick, that means that our piston rings are leaking. And if it comes out right here, it means obviously we've got a blown head gasket. But again, you need to verify how much leakage you have. If you plug this up and you had 90% leakage, you're probably fine. There's nothing to worry about. Even if you were hearing a little bit of air, it's not the end of the world. Uh, not until it gets worse or, or you were to hear that you had air coming out around your head gasket. Okay, a blown head gasket needs to be fixed, whether it's leaking a little bit or a lot. Okay, so... In our case though, we have 80% leakage and I can hear it right there. So let me uh, plug my smoke machine up and let's see if I can show you guys this and uh, verify that it does have a blown head gasket. All right, it should be coming out directly behind this uh, intake runner. Okay, you actually see it on the top, there you go. Um, I can see it spraying straight out behind that intake runner. And there we go. So there's our head gasket leak. So now we just need to get a part ordered, get the head removed, check the head for warpage. And if the head is good, then we'll just simply put it back together, readjust our valves, and this guy will be good to go. So there you go, guys. That's how you use a leak down tester to determine if you have a blown head gasket. Again, you can also use this leak down tester to determine if you have valves that aren't seating well or you have bad rings and I actually prefer using a leak down tester over a compression tester for this engine and for a lot of the uh, the more of the bigger riding more engines because there's a mechanism called a compression release mechanism when you're cranking the engine over there's a little mechanism that bumps the intake valve open slightly to bleed off some of that compression air to make it easier to crank once the engine runs that little device uh, swings out of the way and uh, is no longer used until you turn the engine back off. But this little compression release mechanism is enough to give you a lower reading on your compression tester than maybe there really is. Okay, just because it's opening up one of the valves and you're losing some of that compression out of that valve. So I prefer to do a leak down test rather than a compression test on these larger riding mower engines. So that's it for today guys. I'm Josh with Metal in Motion. We'll catch you next time.